asks, so what? Well, what is the I, answer well, to the so what? Well, when I did that, I solved a 15-year-old problem. People were thinking about sending pictures and uh, information or data on glass fiber 15 years before then. Mm. But the production speed was 2 meters a second. That means you cannot replace copper wires with that. 2 meters a second makes fiber optics cost expensive. One dollar and copper was 10 cents. So it doesn't, economically, you can't do that. doesn't make sense. You can't do business with that. So when I, made, when I developed the ability to see what's going on, I redesigned the application system in a way so that you have uniform, these are all covered in my patents. Mm -hmm. You can Google those patents and look at them. Mm -hmm. And we, were in a, we went to a factory to test it. And everybody was going, well, we've tried everything. What else can we try? And all of a sudden, my boss said, Dr. Benson has an invention. We should try it. That went to the top as the thing to try. And the manager said, we're going to shut the plant down in Wilmington, Delaware, and try it. when people are going to lose their jobs, their mortgage, then everybody wants to try anything. And they don't even think whether you're black or how long you've been there. They just want a solution. They just want a solution. Mm. And so they dedicated one tower to test this device, this invention. They put it on showtime. Immediately it went from 2 to 20 meters a second. 20 meters, that's 10, 10 times, times the speed of production. Mm -hmm. And that cut the cost of production of fiber optics from one dollar to ten cents of a copper. So now you are matching copper. Exactly. Yeah. And so all the copper wires were replaced in America. So you got them out of business. I got them. I, you I, got I, copper I got out of reboot. business. Yes. I got them into. <laughs> you know, everybody yeah. saved their jobs. Mm -hmm. Everybody's happy. They mm -hmm. used to call it a Mensa system <laughs> for a few years. Yeah. And and all of a sudden, all the copper wires in America was replaced with this technology. And so for the person at home, this means you get faster speed. Anytime you download a picture, it goes you, faster. It goes faster. No so if you're getting a quick service, it's because of your It's invention. because of this. Mm. So we can have the entire social media in play now. You can send YouTube videos. You can send Facebook pictures. You can send Twitter. You can send all these. They are being transmitted over this glass at the speed of light, laser light. That's in milliseconds. How does that make you feel? I mean, well, coming from Ghana, it makes me feel proud that you've impacted the world. You've made this possible. Did anybody look down on you because you were black? Well, people will look till you show them something. Once they see that, then they don't think color. When they are reading my nanotechnology commercialization book in China, Tokyo, London, they don't look at you as a black person or not. They look at you as somebody who can see things in the future, put it in, in practice, and make it happen. Did you feel you had to work harder because you were black and people were... Well, were, usually were you did that. But mm -hmm. once you're at a certain level, mm -hmm. when I was writing, editing that book, I choose the editors. You know, white, Chinese, I choose the four editors. I had, I had one editor who is white. I said, if I don't get your manuscript in six months, you are out. Six months, you didn't do it. You fired him. He was out. Big time professor. I put a younger professor there. I got it in one month. You know, you got to be serious. You got to believe in yourself, no matter what color you are, that you can do things and you can make it happen with your God-given innate talent. If you work hard at it and you believe it, you believe you are as good as anybody else, that is why the book is called The Right Stuff Comes, Comes in, in Black, Black too. too. And that's your new book, your autobiography. Yes. Okay. Um, why are we not applying science uh, m m at a greater speed in Ghana? Well, that, that's why I'm here. Mm -hmm. America applies science and engineering. As I said, Donald Trump, our president, is surrounded by technology. He can sit here and say, hey, the nuclear submarine over there in North Korea, we're going. He can, because of science and technology. His advisors are science. JFK putting man in the space is science. I'm here to do the same thing. We'll surround. President Anadu with technology and make sure that the ministers and the presidency is surrounded by technology and their work. I mean, they use cell phones. They ride in airplanes. All this is technology. So what I'm trying to do here at this time is to make sure that the leadership is surrounded by tech. When I talk about high-speed bullet trains, that they know is technology. Japan has high-speed bullet trains that have been running for 45 years, not a single accident. So when Ghana has trains running at 20 miles per hour and it's derailing, 
Something seriously is wrong. How fast are those bullet trains? 220 miles an hour. It's like an airplane. Exactly. Except that it's on the ground. And you want them to, we want Ghana to have I want like Ghana this. to have that. Mm -hmm. That is what is going to move Ghana forward. I don't want to hear we've got to crawl, we've got to do this. No, we got to have this high-speed train. Because when we have it, and I advise our president to sign that contract the way India signed, India prime minister signed his. How did he sign it? He, he told the developers, whether they are from China or Japan, he said, don't make the train and ship it to us, just like you ship cars to us to drive. Don't do that. Make the components. Bring it here and let our Indian engineers work with you guys and learn and put it together. And I advise the president to do the same thing. They will bring the components here and tech engineers, scientists from Ghana, they would assemble it together. And by that time, they would learn a few Mandarin. So if something goes wrong, they can fix it themselves, or they can ask the right question for it to be fixed. Not like us having to call the people from China to come and maintain the exactly. air conditions at National Theater because exactly. they don't understand Chinese. Exactly. And that's a significant technology transfer to us. You know, we are naturally skeptical. Um, when you talk about bullet trains, don't people just laugh in your face and say, ha, what are you talking about? What have you been drinking, sir, with respect? Don't you get that rea reaction? Well, that reaction may come, but if, 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 if that's what I stood on, there will be no fiber optics. There will be no internet. So you're thick-skinned. You have to be thick-skinned to get things done? We have to be thick-skinned. Yesterday, we had a lot of dinner with uh, I decided old boys again, and I tried to get all the questions from them. You know, I'm very grateful to them, mm -hmm. you know, for the awards and accolades. They are all happy that I'm here. But I told them this, that we got to do this. This is so important to us. If we build this train, and we can do it in three to four years, in this administration, the Chinese have built 40 in 10 years. That's four every year. They can build Ghana's high-speed train in three to four years. If they build it, you'll be shocked what can come out of it. All of a sudden, we are thinking about the steel that the trains run on. Can we make it in Ghana? They are thinking about the, 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 different, the, the, the different train parts. Can we make this in Ghana? Aluminum that we are negotiating with the Chinese yeah, Chibi. for the Chebi bauxite. Mm -hmm. You know, they are, if, if, if we do it here, can we use the components for the train? We'll be, be thinking along those lines. We'll be making things that has value in them that we can sell at a higher price. Because if you continue to sell only minerals and little oil here, and, and that's it. We'll be like that for the next 40 years. But if we leapfrog and build these trains here, we will have the technology to build cars, technology to build trains, technology to build everything we need. Now Ghana doesn't manufacture anything, not even a match in a matchbox. This is serious. We don't, we don't even manufacture glass, eyeglassware. You know, if somebody get mad somewhere and say, oh, I'm not going to ship Ghana, nothing, you know what would happen. You were in trouble. So I want us to have the ability mm. to manufacture things right here in Ghana. And if we build this train, it means we're going to create about, see, 90% of the districts are along the train line from here to the border. 90%. So we can put factories there that will manufacture things for the train. I can put what is called reaction injection molding, uh, uh, plastic molding materials, even in, in, in some of those factories. And they will make the parts, you sit in your car, all the plastics, they all make by reaction injection molding. So inside the train, we can make those plastic components that can be inside it. In an airplane, where you put your luggage, they are all done by that technology. Mm -hmm. so, so the technology we can develop, mm -hmm. children, we can probably create 500 to half a million to a million jobs by building, by building this train. When I met the World Bank president, Joachim Levy, he has been to Ghana. He showed me a picture of the president. You know what he told me? As soon as he saw the bullet train that we want to build in Ghana and the maintenance facility we want to build in Kumasi, you know what he said? Doc, this is what World Bank will fund. World Bank has 45 billion with a B set mm -hmm. aside for infrastructure projects in Africa. So we just need to come up with our plan? We've got to come up with a project okay. that they will fight. The, the World Bank leader says, mm -hmm. this is it. 
That means bullet train, high speed train, we've got to build it. Green light. I'm also looking at the Kumasi International Airport Design and Development uh, with Aviation Maintenance Facility. This is something that is also close to your heart. Exactly yes. what is it meant to do? Well, uh, this, I presented parts of this at the Diaspora Conference, which yes. you moderated. I, I was the host of that event, yeah. And so, this is the eight gate new airport maintenance facility that will, that will be built in the middle of the country. These are two things. Once we do this, it means we can maintain airplanes right here in Ghana. Airplanes will fly from the 15 countries in West Africa to come here and get maintained. Instead of flying to Amsterdam, Ethiopia, South Africa, they'll fly closer and we're going to train the engineers and the students coming out of high school to be, to be mechanics, graduating out of high school. Boeing, the largest aircraft manufacturing plant, uh, company in the world, built, that built 787. They've promised me they are willing to train the engineers from tech and all these high school graduates to come and be mechanics, but give them certificates. Boeing has told me that. And I worked with them for 10 years in other areas. If they are willing to do this, I think we should take, a, take them up on it. What is the government saying? Because in the end, you need a government stamp of approval to get some of these things done. Well, uh -huh. I had a great meeting mm -hmm. with Nanado. Mm -hmm. in, and I'll be meeting him again here and the vice president. He said, Doc, make sure you work hard with my sector ministers on this. In fact, from here, I'll be meeting with uh, Minister Dapa, yes, uh, who handles the aviation. aviation yeah, right. For the first right. time, mm. we'll be meeting face to face. Mm. This is so serious, it will bring technology to Ghana, it will bring money to Ghana, may having a maintenance facility, mm. it will be, it, and, and what's good about it is it's sustainable development. Mm. In other words, you are flying, you don't fly all the way to Amsterdam, spew, spew all this. You maintain yeah. here? Yeah, you maintain okay. it here. And then we have jobs here as well. We have jobs here, we have technology transfer here, it will move Ghana forward. <laughs> We're wrapping up this conversation. I'm excited about the things you're saying because it, I can see a picture of a very interesting Ghana um, if these things come to pass. Uh, let me just wind back to the beginning. And so you, your patents, I mean, you had seven in six years. And yeah. What uh, does that mean? I mean, so if you, you have a patent. Uh, well, when you have an invention or patent, mm -hmm. that means nobody has a claim to it but you. If they put somebody else's name on it, they don't get a patent. So your inventions... Uh, it's in your you, name. You registered them, they're in your in name. In your name, U.S. patents. Now, what's interesting mm -hmm. is that I have here all the seven patents. Four, four of them transform fiber optics forever. Mm -hmm. Which uh, is the technology behind the internet. Yes. Okay. Everybody now can take a cell phone and call America and call South Africa quicker, faster. It's because of that technology. Mm. You know, all the telephone companies you have here... They are relying on this technology. Can I ask a question? Yes. Are you rich? I'm rich, but not probably the level that I should be. Whether it's Mark Zuckerberg, you know, who are billionaires, you know. But you're a millionaire from the patent. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to. You got to. You got to. Now, uh, well, all my four books are also selling very well. But this is the, where the deal is. But this is this where it starts. Mm -hmm. Now, this particular patent here. You see the crosshairs on TV when the smart bomb is hitting? Mm -hmm. That's the patent. Defense we started technology. that technology, technology. At, at Bell. Mm -hmm. Bell. Mm -hmm. So this being used by the U.S. Department of, of, of Defense. It started all the smart bomb, this thing. That's mm -hmm. why you see the arrow mm -hmm. showing the missile flying. Mm -hmm. The missile has a little camera at the tip that digit, uh, takes the pictures of the targets, mm -hmm. digitizes and put it on the fiber optic so that the pilot has to just lock on something. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have to know how to do mathematics. He just has to know how to play video arcade. Do you feel responsible when they take out somebody uh, by long distance using your technology? Well, I developed the, we developed this to, to, uh, uh, to, to defend America. Let mm. me put it that way. Mm. Mm. And to make the world safer. Mm. That's how I look at it. Mm. You know, but like anything, uh, you can make mistakes. Mm -hmm. you know. When I was talking about the GPS addresses last time, mm -hmm. you put a wrong address mm -hmm. like we did. You know, we hit the Chinese embassy one point. Mm -hmm. You know, that G that's why the GP and getting the right address is very, very important. You'll we'll be following that conversation, right? Yeah, we'll be doing what that. do you make about it of, of that GPS uh, conversation? I think I think uh, the uh, the Nanado and the vice president are right. You know, if I, if I if only I want to change 
personally, one individual address, that's free. Even 10, that's free. But to do it for the entire country, nobody will do that for you for free. And what's interesting is, if a fire is in that house, and the address is not upgraded, the fire truck will go to the wrong place and let mm -hmm. that building build down. So this is so important. Mm. We got to have that. Okay. Yeah, we got to have that. Because even in my train, the, house, the bullet train, we're going to book fiber optic cable along the lines, the train route. Your invention is coming to work again. Again. Mm -hmm. So that you can sit in the train 200 miles an hour and be on the internet. You can stay in Tamale and work at Accra. You know, because you get in one and a half hours instead of nine hours. You'll be late for work. Did the Americans may, uh, ask you to become a citizen, or you just decided? Oh, yeah. No, well, um, once you do these things, you got to, you know. Mm, yeah. uh, but what's more important, what's more important that uh, what I've done has made America mm -hmm. number one. Mm. And I hope what I will do here will make, make Ghana, Ghana number, one. number one. I'm going to end on a musical note. I know you love that song. I love that song. Yeah. I'll be giving this... <laughs> This, uh, the ocean, this during their disco uh, uh, dinner, Event, yeah, uh, what 5,000 CDs or whatever, mm -hmm. just to help, yeah, you know, the band and everything. Okay, but I'll be giving this, I'll be signing one for President Kufu, yes, and President Rollins, mm -hmm. you know, and DC. I'll be signing, I'll be meeting them later today. I'll mm -hmm. be giving, giving them this plan. Mm -hmm. But Utunfo has one, mm -hmm. and the vice chancellor of Kwame Nkrumah University has Your one. Too. Yes. Dr. Thomas Mercer, it's a real pleasure. I look mm -hmm. forward to uh, uh, more copies of your book in the system. You said you, you ordered them from Amazon. Y yeah. The uh, right yeah. stuff comes in black, too. too. Yeah, yeah, they've been shipped. I'm okay. calling the registrar. Make sure you all get copies. Okay. You can go and download the right stuff comes in black on, Amazon. on the internet. On yes, Am on, yeah, you can download it. Yeah. Uh, even the nanotechnology commercialization book is there. It's a little bit expensive, mm -hmm. $150. Yes, but it's good stuff. But it's 450 pages. Yes, indeed. A but lot the of right stuff. stuff is in the range of 20 to, to 40. It's also in French. Yeah. yeah. Le Toffe des Zero. Yes. Existe également en, en noir. Exactly. The right stuff comes in black. Merci too. beaucoup. Merci beaucoup, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. And with that's our conversation with Dr. Thomas Mentz. We're going to end with his song, all right? Uh, the Beneza song. And you can sing a few lines if you like. Sure. This is the like song, it. right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because I'm so very pleased okay. with the reception in Ghana. Okay. I'm, I'm very pleased the reception from everybody. Yes, indeed. You're our own. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the Adisado old boys, I mean, they were so happy. Give me a few hours. I, I'm so pleased. Kwame Nkrumah University of the RP Bafour. I'm very pleased. I'll be going back again. And so the entire country has given me warm reception. Mm -hmm. I feel very proud to be back. And we're going to move Ghana into the next venture. And what's your word for the young people who are watching? The young people, I used to be where you were. A yeah, little kid running around, mm -hmm. you know, wearing flip flops, didn't know anything. But if you apply yourself and work hard and believe in God, that's why I like that song. Believe in God. Mm -hmm. You're going to make it to the highest level. Nothing can, can prevent you from reaching the highest level of your talent. I'll be getting the Kwame Nkrumah Genius Award on the 16th with my good friend Quincy Jones, mm -hmm. all the way from America. A few others. The musician? Yes. Fanta a good friend of yours? Yes. Fantastic. Oh, all of them know me because they use Your the technology, internet. of they course. Use the internet. <laughs> all right. So I look forward to that. I look forward to helping Ghana move forward. I'll be working with everybody in Ghana. I know we're going to make it happen. Thank you very much, Dr. Thomas Mensa, Yadawasi, Ebenezer. Thank you. Mm -hmm.